all people yearn for God. Now, they, they sometimes go after a false God with that yearning. They will turn to alcohol. They'll turn to drugs. They'll turn to sex. They'll turn to um, uh, sports addictions. I mean, fact, guys, anytime somebody has an addictive behavior, it's because instead of turning to the real God that will quench their thirst, they turn to a false God. Now, some people get angry at God and they reject God and become atheists. You have to be taught to be an atheist. You do not have to teach a small child about God. They know there is a God. You just have to point them to the right direction of that God. You, they, it's amazing how a child yearns and sees God, and you, they are taught not to do that. And I pray that we're not the ones teaching them that. So, so the ancient saints had this expectation of a bodily resurrection from the dead. Many of these teachings are, are found in the prophets. Go to Isaiah uh, 26. The prophet Isaiah uh, the 26th chapter. Remember Isaiah is sometimes called the fifth gospel. Why? Because it so accurately foretells the life of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 26. Excuse me. The preacher's about to melt into his shoes, so we're going to make sure it doesn't get much warmer in here. So Isaiah 26, this is now underlined in my Bible, uh, verse 19, because this is so important. Listen to what it says here. Your, your dead will live. Their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. This is talking about the rapture. This is talking about when, when we die, we know we are separated from our bodies, right? I've done, I'm on funeral number three this month, Wednesday. So if you need proof that everybody's going to die, I can, I can give you the proof. So, so you're, we're all going to die. The body and the soul separate. The soul goes on. The body stays here. This is saying that there is going to be a bodily resurrection at some point in the future. We know this is the rapture. The rapture is when those who have gone on before to be with Jesus, at the rapture, we are going to get new bodies. Bodies that feel and see and smell and taste just like these bodies now, except perfect. How do we know that? How about Daniel? Go to Daniel, the 12th chapter. This is a scripture I have read, I don't know how many times. I've read the Bible cover to cover six times. I've read Daniel, I'll say dozens of times. I've never got this scripture before. Daniel, the 12th chapter, the very last chapter. We're going to read verses 1 to 3 and jump down to 13. Listen, this sounds like the New Testament. Listen to what it says here. At that time, verse 1, at that time, Michael, the great prince, we know him as the archangel, the archangel Michael. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress as has not happened from the beginning of the nation until the end. That is the great tribulation. We know that from the book of Revelation. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book. Now, I need you to remember that. The book. Names written in the book, we're going to that more, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Ah, bodily resurrection. Some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. That's the great white throne judgment. We'll talk about that in a minute. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Did you hear that? We're going to glow with the glory of God. We're going to glow with, with Jesus' glory. Look at verse 13. As for you, meaning personally, Daniel, as for you, go your way till the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Physical resurrection. We know that the souls go on to paradise or Abraham's bosom. How do we know that? Remember what Jesus told that, the, the thief on the cross that day? Today you will be with me in paradise. Not in a hundred years. Not, not when, no, no, no. At some point, our bodies again and our spirits, they depart. The spirit goes on to be with God in some holy place. We don't understand that. Paradise, Abraham's bosom, wherever. And then at the time of the rapture, when the archangel Michael shouts and the trumpet call of God comes, from the earth will come our bones once again. Our bones. Doesn't matter if you've been eaten by animals or, or cremated, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you were buried. It doesn't matter how you met your end. You will be given a new body that is like the body that Jesus received on the day he resurrected from the dead. At the rapture, the saints' names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We'll get their new bodies. Let's learn a little bit more about this book. Let's go back to the Revelation, the last book of the Bible there. The Revelation, chapter 3. 
Chapter 3, verse 5 is the first time in the Revelation that this book of life is mentioned. This is, uh, there's, there's seven churches that have a prophecy said to them. This is for the church in Sardis. And here's what it says, starting in verse 5, chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. Note, I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. I will never blot out his name from the book of life. The same book of life that was talked about in Daniel is the same book of life that was talked about now in the Revelation. Go to the Revelation chapter 20. This is where we find out a little bit more of the importance of your name being written in the book of life. We talked about the great white throne judgment. It, it, it is a sad place. It, is a, it will be a real place. Here's what it says about the great white throne judgment. Chapter 20 of the Revelation, starting verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Listen carefully. Another book was open, which is the book of life. Ah. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown in the lake of fire. Stop there. The only time you need death and Hades is when someone dies who is awaiting judgment. That's why they go there. Okay? Death and Hades, hell, and this place called death is only a temporary place. The lake of fire, as we read on, is the second death. If anyone's name, verse 15, if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. See, if your name's written in the book of life, you get to skip the great white throne judgment. Ta-da! You don't have to go through judgment. It's all done. You have already got your body. Your body and your spirit by this time will already have been rejoined together. And the amazing part is, this book of books, the Christian Bible, we talked about two weeks ago extensively. This book of books agrees from one end to the other. And the book of Daniel, written some 650 years before the Revelation, it talks about this, your name being in this book, this book of life. And we find out in the Revelation how important that book is, and it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. That was a little low on that airplane that just flew by, so I get it. Okay. Who's, who's our lookout today, you know? And so, but again, the Lamb's Book of Life, folks, you want your name written there, and if you're born again, it is. What have I told you this teaching about resurrection goes back even further? It goes back beyond uh, Isaiah. It goes back beyond Daniel. Let's go to the book of Job. The book of Job. That's right before the, the, the psalm, the book of Psalms. Uh, go back to the book of Job. It's, it's the oldest book in the Bible in the sense that we're not sure when it was written. We're not sure when Job lived. Job might have lived before the flood. He might have lived after the flood up to the time of Abraham. Nobody has him living later than that. But the book of Job, by the way, very difficult to read. Um, if you ever say, hey, I think I'm having a good day. Let's sit down and read the book of Job. No, 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 it's, it's, it can be kind of depressing. That and Jeremiah uh, can really, really test your emotions. But the book of Job is very difficult. If you want to know how to read it, please see me. I'll, I'll give you a little, little pointers. But we, in Job chapter 19, verse 25... The first time I heard this, they didn't identify it. And I went, oh, yeah, that's from the New Testament. Here's what it said. I know that my Redeemer lives. And in the end, he will stand upon the earth. Now, you got to stop right there. We know that Jesus is coming back to earth because of Revelation chapter uh, uh, 18 or, or 19. We already read chapter 20. He's going to be here for the judgment. We already read that. We go to Zechariah. Zechariah tells us that the Messiah is going to come. And he's going to put his feet his feet again on the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives is going to split. There's going to be a valley between him. And a new river is going to form that goes to the Dead Sea. We, we know these things. Show one of the oldest people who we have record of in, in history. I know that my Redeemer lives. And then in the end, he will stand upon the earth. Look at verse 26. And after my skin has been destroyed, in other words, in the grave, turn back to dust, yet in my flesh I will see I myself will see with my own eyes, I am not another, how my heart yearns within me. Job understood a physical resurrection from the dead. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's one of the most remarkable statements of hope and faith 
and prophecy in the entire Old Testament. Oh, it's beautiful, but there's one more. Turn now to Psalm 17. The next book to the right is Psalms. Go to Psalm 17 and stay there. So we're going to be back in Psalms uh, very quickly here for our, our, our next our, our next major area. But Psalm 17, this is, this is from David, King David, the great psalmist. Here's what he writes at the end of Psalm 17. And I, verse, Psalm 17, verse 15, And I, in righteousness, I will see your face. See your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. We're going to have eyes. We're going to have the ability to see God again when we get to the other side, when our bodies are raptured and we are taken up. And if, if you fall asleep before, we're going to read this later, if you fall asleep before, your, your soul and your body will once again be together. With your eyes, you will see God. With your, you will taste God. You will feel the presence of God, warmth on your face from Him. So the ancients hoped and they longed for a bodily Resurrection after death. But there's more. Not only did the ancients look forward to a bodily resurrection, the ancients understood that the Messiah would bodily resurrect first. They, they recognized that the Messiah would bodily resurrect first. And once again, we go to King David, this time Psalm 16. Look at Psalm 16. King David prophesies this about the Messiah very clearly. We pick it up in verse 9, verse six, chapter 16, verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. In other words, in death, your body rests. You got that. It will rest secure because, verse 10, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. No, notice how in verse 10, Holy One is capitalized. It points to Messiah. Jesus is the Holy One. He came in the flesh. He was put to death. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Your Holy One will not see decay. Excuse me. Nor will you, you let your Holy One see decay. Verse 11. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Folks, when we get to heaven, we're not some... We will be disembodied spirits for a while, but that's not eternity. We, we go to paradise with Abraham's bosom. At the rapture, we get these bodies. We're going to be able to taste. Oh... I love food. I, I know it's It lost 16 pounds. So here we go. We're, 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 we're losing some. Susan and I, we're, we're working on Whoa! Hey, you messed me up there. Susan and I, were working hard. Not her. That's Susan. That, that's Melissa. And so Susan and I are working hard. Uh, back to working out. And, and things are going real good. But, but I love food. I, 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 I love chocolates. Praise God. Yeah, amen. It's from God. It really is. It's from God. Listen, guys, we don't have food to make us fat. That's because we overeat. And that's we overindulge. But, but I just, what's it going to be like to be in heaven and take a bite of a chocolate and clear that doesn't have to come to you? What's it going to be like to taste food that, that, that hasn't had pollution in the sense of there's not death in it? Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. This, this was one of these sermons. It was like, woo, 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 woo. 
I just, uh, I, my Bible, I have three Bibles open. I'm not kidding. Three Bibles open and flipping, flopping pages.